know, to basically fill itself up. So you'd have to support something in the media? Well, that being would then become an extension of the, 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 your pagoda would become... So you are lowering the speed. The proposal is to lower the speed. The proposal, the proposal is to lower that, but in lowering that, we'd have to lower this as well. Yeah. In July 2009, I signed an agreement uh, with a Mr. Stuart Bradbury who owned Earth 58 in Camps Bay. The agreement was drawn up and facilitated by Chris Willemser of the Camps Bay Ratepayers Association. He was deemed the sole mediator of the agreement and this agreement was signed in good faith. And Chris Willemser and his chosen conveyancer, Penny Plowman, were responsible for the registration of the agreement and notorial deed thereof. There were only two other co-signatures to the agreement, myself, of 57, and a Mr. Retief of 87. The only person deemed affected by this development at the time of signing the agreement was Mr. Retief of 87, as, according to Mr Bradbury, the city said that he was the only one affected due to a scenic drive departure. Certain clauses from the agreement were put into notorial deed um, with October 2008 drawings, 101, which were the plans, and 102, which were the elevations. And both these drawings were registered as a notorial deed on the 26th of May 2011. And you'll see the October 2008 drawing to the left, drawing 101, the plans and the elevations drawing 102 to the right, also dated October 2008. These were the only architectural drawings drawn by architect Steve Long given to the affected parties and these drawings did not include a roof plan. The agreement stipulated that the conveyancing attorney would be Penny Plowman who registered the um, October 2008 drawings. In terms of registering the notorial deed, Mr Bradbury committed the first fraud, where he was registering October 2008 drawings, but the city had approved different drawings. Dated November 2009, plans which was drawing 101, and Elevations, which was drawing 102, also dated November 2009. Uh, there were no roof drawings um, attached to these approvals. Again, to the left, I put the November 2009 drawing 101, and to the right, the drawing 102, both dated November 2009. However, you will note there are no revision numbers despite this drawing needing a height departure, a five metre road widening line setback, and a scenic drive departure. These drawings were not seen by any affected party, either party to the agreement or not party to the agreement. So unknown to uh, myself and Mr Des Retief, uh, Mr Bradbury and his architect Steve Long were perpetrating another fraud upon us. They were putting in rider plans, which said it was for an existing dwelling, on the 5th of January 2011. This um, submission was received on the 10th of January 2011. And is the building older than 60 years? He's put no, despite it being a 1920s building. Uh -huh. And he also states, I, the registered owner, hereby declare that I have personally checked the title deeds or any other documents relevant to the property concerned, and declare that the proposed work is not contrary to any restrictive conditions or servitudes applicable thereto, and in the event of such contraventions will bear the sole responsibility to rectify aforesaid contraventions. Mr Bradbury signed this on the 5th of January 2011, and it was received on the 10th of January 2011 by PBDM. And this is the state of the building as it was when Mr Bradbury was submitting his application for a rider plan. And it was very unlawful. And one has to question again, why was the building inspector allowing this to continue? The Beta Road boundary had been completely demolished and the old 
1920s garage had been demolished, which is supposed to be existing. This was going to be retained. Um, I really question the building inspector here. And the only inference can be is that they are complicit with Mr. Bradbury. And here is the planning and building development management form 01. And Mr. Bradbury is stating the description of work. It's rider plan to 1809 um, oblique 09. And the plan number is 00538-2011. Um, again, you can see the 10th of January 2011 received stamp. Uh, I don't know who the Director of Survey and Information is, but that's signed on the 10th of the 1st, 2011. And the only other stamp on this form is for the uh, zoning uh, scheme compliant, which was stamped um, a year later on the 1st of June 2012, signed by Ozzy Gonzalez on behalf of land use management. And Mr Bradbury, in terms of registering the notarial deed, had committed a second fraud as he was building to November 2009 rider plans. These drawings not only needed many departures, but they also did not contain a roof plan drawing, um, an architectural roof plan. And again, I question why, when these drawings were radically different and the as-built structure of the property was clearly being built um, in the main to these drawings, did the building inspector only issue uh, a ceaseworks order on the roof? And once again, I put the Rider Plan November 2009 drawing 101 to the left and the Rider Plan elevations drawing 102 to the right, also dated November 2009. And you'll further note there are no revision numbers. On the 12th of April 2011, which was merely weeks before Mr Bradbury had registered fraudulently the October 2008 drawings as a notarial deed, Steve Wilkinson, the city building inspector, issued a cease works order on the roof only. It was not the building inspector, but the affected parties that had realised that the setbacks were unlawful in terms of the building Mr Bradbury had built illegally. And this was the view from my property. I sent these photographs to the building inspector on the 12th of February 2011 because the pavements were being damaged and the sand was blowing everywhere into our properties as it was left uncovered. Uh, the building inspector never even bothered to reply and you can see here that the Beta Road boundary wall had been demolished unlawfully. These walls were very old and contained asbestos bricks. Um, Mr Bradbury didn't have one demolition permit and certainly no permission to demolish or excavate underneath the Beta Road boundary wall. The building inspector should have acted within his mandate, within his legal mandate, because if he had acted lawfully, this building, even at the stage where it is now in this photograph, should have been stopped. It was clearly illegal. It wasn't being built to the 2009 approved drawing and it was not an existing dwelling. Four months previously, Steve Wilkinson, the building inspector, had been written to by Chris Willemser of Camps Bay Ratepayers Association to say that Mr Bradbury was demolishing and excavating unlawfully and recklessly. He was aware that a 54th common boundary wall had been demolished and was dangerous. He was aware that my boundary wall had been demolished and was dangerous. Both of these walls without any intention to demolish or any demolition permit and neither did he have a heritage permit. And note the red circle here where my wall was recklessly demolished. That was actually an old outbuilding um, that was circa at least um, the early 1930s. Now all of these things that I've described so far are very easy to see, but this is only in retrospect because my investigations have taken years to, to find the evidence and to put the photographs and the videos together. Mr Bradbury was still registering the notarial deed to the October 2008 drawings 101 and 102 um, in April 2011 when he had a cease works order. 
I have no idea why he simply didn't stop registering the notarial deed or come clean with us that he was building illegally. I'm going to take you through some technical details with regards to engineer drawings and architectural drawings. Then after that, I'm going to take you through one of the negotiation meetings we had um, on the 20th of January 2012. Um, just so you can see how we, uh, we thought we were negotiating in good faith. Uh, but once more, you know, Mr. Bradbury and his architect and um, obviously aided by the, the city, Ozzy Gonzalez and Steve Wilkinson, uh, were basically um, not, not negotiating in good faith at all. Um, and in fact, what they were doing to us was committing another fraud. The National Building Regulations, Part G, Excavations, G1, General Stability Requirement. 1. Where any excavation relating to a building is carried out or is to be carried out on any site, and such excavation may impair the safety or stability of any property or service, the owner of such site shall take adequate precautionary measures to ensure that the safety and stability of such property or service is maintained. 2. While any excavation remains open, and during the placing of any foundation within it, such excavation shall be maintained in a safe condition by the owner or person carrying out such excavation. 3. Where the safety or stability of any property or service is likely to be impaired by such excavation, or where the depth at any point of such excavation is likely to be more than 3 metres, the owner of the site shall a. Obtain the prior written authorization of the local authority for such excavation and b. Take the precautionary measures specified by the local authority or an approved competent person in such authorization. 4. The owner of any site shall, at least seven days prior to the commencement of any excavation contemplated in sub-regulation 1, notify the local authority in writing of his intention to excavate. 5. Any owner or person who fails to comply with any requirement of this regulation shall be guilty of an offence. G2. Deemed to satisfy requirements. The requirements of Regulation G11 shall be deemed to be satisfied where the excavation complies with SANS 10400-G. Now here is the Engineer Excavation Construction Method Statement and it is clearly not drawn to the 2009 approved drawing. And this drawing was drawn on the 7th of October 2010. Um, there are no revision numbers. It says designed by TC, so we have to assume that's Theo Kotsi, and drawn by RI. I have no idea who that person is, but they're from the ICE group. And you can see the method statement of Wall 1, the South Neighbour, which is Earth 54. And you can see the Wall 2, West Neighbour, Earth 57, which is me. And finally, method statement for Wall 3, which is going to be a normal retaining wall. And that is the east facade um, of Mr Bradbury's Earth 58 building. And here we have engineer Theo Kotsi's um, this was a drawing called the foundation layout and you'll see the revision numbers here I've outlined in blue revisions uh, 0 to 3 um, these were from the 17th of September to the 19th of November 2010 technically these are all the drawings that would have been done up until the cease works order um, given in April 2011 and the revisions 4 and 5 I've outlined in red were um, drawn after um, the 2012 approval which we're not dealing with that now we're just dealing with the events that led up to that 2012 um, drawing approval so I put the, um, the 01809 2009 stamp approval to the left and remember both drawings were approved numbers 101 and 102. Then to the right I've put the foundation engineer layout um, plan and you'll see there are revisions 0 to 5 and revision 0 starts at 17th of September 2010 which is a year after the 01809 2009 drawings were approved. The city have no SANS 1-4 engineering 
um, forms on record and no engineer drawings for the 2009 approval. Uh, there are no, there's nothing for the 01809-2009 drawing, which is important because this had it, uh, an existing garage that was going to be retained. Um, and since my engineer has gone through the drawings, um, we've now realised that this was actually an engineering impossibility to retain, as was the October 2008. So it's very important that the city answer why there are no sands one to four or why the city in approving the 2009 drawings didn't realize that they were in fact an engineering impossibility to build um, very important because i went to court um, to set aside drawings um, that were actually an engineering impossibility to build um, as was the agreement drawing registered at the deeds office um, and i i never knew until 2017, which is after the judgment, um, any of this, which is which is actually very wrong, particularly when the city have shut down, they won't answer me, and neither will Mr. Bradbury unless I take him through the courts. Notwithstanding that um, Mr. Bradbury was not building the 2009 approved drawings, and he had never had any intention, uh, and this is clear in the engineer excavation statement and the engineer foundation layout. And here is the engineer's foundation layout, engineer's drawing. And to the left is the wall one um, method statement on the excavation drawing, west side, earth 54. And wall two at the top from left to right is um, my common boundary with uh, earth 58, Mr. Bradbury. And that is wall two on the excavation method statement. And then wall three, which is the um, facade east facing um, method statement uh, drawing. There was no roof drawing on the agreement drawings that I'd signed prior to the 2009 approval. And there was no roof drawing on the 2009 approval either. Um, this drawing is a revision four and was included in the uh, 8th of February 2012 um, email that was sent to both myself and Tony Stern. And this in actual fact was another architectural um, drawing fraud because revision four, um, the engineer drawing, was actually drawn on the 11th of June 2012. Um, so something doesn't make sense here, and we saw these engineer drawings at City Interface on the 14th of August 2017. Um, but since we saw these drawings, the engineer drawings on City Interface, they've now disappeared from uh, the City file, um, which begs the question why um, they were on the City file and now they've gone. Um, and they were only there for one day, and that was the day that through my PIA application um, I had been able to get access to the drawings. So why did Mr Bradbury and his architect take these engineer drawings out of the city file? That's another question I need to ask them at the appropriate forum. So we've got two revision fours. We've got the architectural drawing, um, which was dated the 12th of the 10th, 2011. And we've got the engineer drawing, which was dated the 11th of June 2012. That's fraud. You cannot have the same revision drawn differently. And none of these drawings um, were drawn to the 2009 approved drawing. So one can only assume that these drawings were drawn to the November 2009 Rider Plan drawings that were submitted in January 2011. Uh, this is a photograph of the on-site meeting we had on the 20th of January 2012. The gentleman standing by the table is uh, the owner of Earth 58, Stuart Bradbury. To the back you'll see his attorney, Coral Hofmeyer, um, his builder, Jeremy Beresford, um, then um, Chris Fulhamser from the Camps Bay Ratepayers Association, my attorney, Brian Aronoff. Chris Fulhamser was representing the Camps Bay Ratepayers Association and the other affected party 
who'd signed the agreement, Des Retief, and my attorney um, that was dealing with the damages um, summons at the time, uh, Brian Aronoff, was representing myself. And the gentleman on the phone is my land surveyor, Mark Jenkins. And also present from the city was Ozzy Gonzalez in the pink shirt. And to his right is um, Steve Wilkinson, the building inspector. They're both standing on an unlawful slab that was placed in front of the dwelling. Um, and in front of them, you'll see some reinforcing bars. That was for a, a retaining Beta Road boundary wall that was demolished um, and not on any approved drawing. None of this was discussed at this meeting. Um, I have no idea why. Um, we seem to just concentrate on things that affected my property um, and not the other affected parties. And to the very left is a gentleman called Kamali Isaacs, who has worked with Bradbury for years. And I'm not sure what his title was in this whole um, development, but he seemed to be like a project manager. To the right, in the white shirt um, behind the ladder, is the architect Steve Long. Uh, Stuart Bradbury is back to us in the blue shirt, and Chris Phillips are pointing up to the um, the the beam, which was um, an unlawful part of the building that they were discussing. Um, there were no discussions at this meeting of the unlawful facade, um, which had been finished with the unlawful built. Um, glass roof um, and in fact this was never discussed at all um, as it didn't concern me I didn't actually bring it up but I have to question why um, the city and Mr Willemser who was acting on behalf of the other neighbours uh, who were affected by the scenic drive departure and the height departure um, completely ignored this unlawful um, aspect of the building which was a major structural um, piece of engineering. And at this time we had absolutely no idea there'd been a five metre basement excavation that had been built up to three metres into the abutting Earth 54. And, and what I'm looking at is that in the future there'll probably be a pool and there's going to be a debate or are we going to look at the level? The mm -hmm. hangs are tall out though. You can move the pool out if that's the one option of an area of pool or if you want to leave the pool where it is then this would kick in the six meter height difference would be an issue and then you'd actually go cut back anyway. And, and a possible, and something that might appease everybody is that if this was cut back to this pole over here, which is in line with that, it will open up a lot of a lot of view lines again. And then it's a matter of just how you tidy this up. And we've pretty much decided to leave the pool. I know, mm -hmm. you have a pool that's open and then from here, I mean, can we go back do, that do something like that that doesn't affect anybody. Yeah. Chris. I just want to ask a question. Yeah. The pool, is there not anything to do with the height? At the moment it's... Is it okay? And the garage? If, if there was no objection to the pool from anybody, the council would not be able to approve it as this building stands. Okay. Because it exceeds the height restriction. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. That, that we, if this is cut back to this level, this point over here, then it's not a problem. That's ground. Yeah. From meters. your point of view, yeah. From, from the zoning yeah. point of view. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where it goes. Because the other, there is a... There is a Another suggestion is for that wall to run even further out, which is against your agreement, but it's not a, it's not a zoning contribution. That wall is there, and nobody would access it, and this room would be slightly bigger, but you wouldn't. And then you leave this as a planter, so that wall goes out. Yeah, the well, the planter would stop anybody from when we're doing concrete locks. So, because that, that concrete. The, um, okay, and the garage, where will the garage be from here? It's from standing this, here, but be, what's the height? Because that the height makes it. the same as, that, as, as ground level. So which is the idea that we well, yes, well, yeah, we've no more or less what, to do what yeah. can be done. You have to ask Chris it's and the it's not my decision. Yeah. I, I'm just the neighbour. I can only comment on my yeah. bit. Some of but all the neighbours are up in arms. It's not, it isn't just me. I'm only concerned about me for this and what my wall's going to be. So we can sort of come to an understanding of what it is that you would like. Yeah. I mean, essentially, this building is in limbo. And I don't know what I don't. I can't so read drawings. To, we I, I can't, which is we why want I wanted to get to a three point D drawings before. By visual means and by plans, mm. we get to a stage where we can say this, that, or the other thing, and there can be an agreement or no agreement. But 
that's what we're doing. Yeah, no, obviously that's, yeah, that's, that's where we're going to wants to get to as well. I, I was just thinking that we were, today was going to be more closer to that point. You've got all the neighbours. <laughs> it's it's not just me. Yeah. Mr Bradbury states under oath in his affidavit, paragraph 108, both Phillips and Willemser confirmed at the end of the meeting that they were satisfied in principle with all proposals, but requested yet another meeting at which Long was to present plans which showed the amendments as discussed and agreed to. They also required the opportunity to discuss the amendments with other neighbours, all of whom had been welcome to attend the meeting, but for whatever reason did not. At this on-site meeting we only went on the upper floor and the ground floor of Earth 58. We never went to the basement, we never saw the basement, we never discussed the basement um, in terms of what was going to happen to the um, basement garden. There was no discussion of any 2.8 retaining wall built into either my property or that of the Earth 54. And it is clear at the end of the meeting, the voice recording, that neither myself or Willemser confirmed at the end of the meeting that um, we were satisfied in principle with all proposals. In fact, it was the opposite. We needed to see something as a drawing, and I had asked for a 3D drawing as I could not read technical architectural drawings and did not understand them at that time as I was a layman. Since our last meeting, we've got the plans that have come in now. Steve brought me the plans last week, or maybe last week, maybe it was. And it's basically put on plan what, what we discussed on site at that site meeting. Um, those, those discussions that we had regarding um, on, the, on the first floor for the planters and these changes there. With, with, um, there was that, that was the one area. The other was the garage, uh, the lower level, the, the, the boundary wall. Um, and then there was also the, the, the bringing back that, that wall on, on, the, uh, on the upper level closer. So, and those were discussions that we had on site. What I just want to do is, or maybe, I don't know, Steve, should I, do you want to go through and just present the, the plans as you've got them, or, okay. or, and, and the changes, so everyone is. So two days after this meeting, on the 8th of February 2012, Steve Long, the architect, wrote to the owner of Earth 54. Dear Tony, as you were abroad at the time of our last meeting with City Council and the neighbours, it was agreed that a set of drawings be forwarded to you. These drawings show the amendments which have been proposed following several meetings with Miss Phillips, the Camps Bay Ratepayers and Council. Being an immediate neighbour and owner of other surrounding properties, we respect the importance of you being kept informed, would be grateful if you were to sanction the proposed improvements. Listed below are the major issues that we have that have been addressed. On the upper level, the concrete triangular pergola will be demolished and replaced with a similar, less conspicuous timber and steel pergola. The exterior lounge wall running parallel with Chrissy Phillips' boundary will be rebuilt on the edge of the upper floor slab, as you recommended during a previous site visit, thus preventing anyone from using the area and overlooking the neighboring properties. A built-in concrete planter proposed on the upstairs patio will provide attractive screening between the properties and will also ensure that this non trafficable portion of deck does not become a usable area in the future. On the ground floor, the frameless gloss sliding folding doors facing Prissy Phillips' property are to be replaced with a wall and a high-level non-overlooking window. At basement level, it was recommended that the existing garage be reinstated to prevent noise and fumes emanating from an open, open parking area. As this affects me, I have to interject here. Let's listen to what was said on the, um, on the on-site meeting. Um, it, it wasn't how Steve Long remembers it. And that's so the same the reason is, the garage is, had to have a roof, wasn't this it? This can be cut back to a certain point over here, um, and then you can straighten it out. Good point. It was something to do with the height. We had to have a roof on it because of the height, the garage. You remember, because in the last meeting I listened back to it and we all said, oh, we will have a, gar a roof, we might, but if okay. we, if we, ha we have to have a roof because of the height restriction. Okay, but we'll, yeah. we'll deal with that one okay. now. Okay, no, no, but in the last meeting, meeting we didn't yes. mention that, that's all. at this level it's this and that point. Okay. And Steve Long's wrongful recollection um, concludes. We are available at your convenience should you have any concerns or recommendations you would like to discuss. 
As architects, we admire your architectural contribution to the neighbourhood and appreciate how much your developments have increased the general value of the surrounding properties. Thank you for your time and assistance so far and for being so accommodating during the construction phase of our project. Kind regards, Steve Long. I'm going to give you an example of how Mr Bradbury and Steve Long Architect commit their fraud. This drawing is the south elevation which affects Mr Stern who Steve Long's just written that letter to um, and Stern owns the abutting of 54. Despite these drawing proposals um, being sent to us um, in February 2012 the date of the drawing was the 12th of October 2011 and you'll note it says revision 4. Further note it says for construction and the client is process plant technology not Stuart Bradbury. Now Steve Long is presenting um, me and Mr Stern um, a drawing which says for construction and the client is process plant technology and not Stuart Bradbury. Um, although it says for construction, these major structures had already been built um, and in fact the, the gloss for the facade was put onto the roof of the east um, fascia on the 13th of December 2011. Um, I sent this photograph to both Ozzie Gonzalez and Steve Wilkinson, the building inspector, and Chris Willemser of Cubra to ask them why they were working on the roof when we understood there was a cease works order over the whole building. Uh, Steve Wilkinson um, replied that Mr Bradbury was building to an approved plan, so I didn't question it again. This side of the building didn't affect me and I had many concerns about my side of the building and um, I just assumed the other affected parties and Chris Willemser had this kind of thing under control. And also I need to remind you that there was a five metre excavation underneath this facade uh, and this had been built up to three metres into the Earth 54 um, abutting property as per the engineer um, foundation layout and the method excavation statement. Steve Long makes no mention of this excavation affecting Earth 54, um, Mr Stern, and he attached drawings to the email uh, that was sent on the 8th of February 2012, and these are the drawings that he attached. I put the approved south elevation to the left, which is the 2009 drawing, and I've put the proposal to the right. Um, you'll see there's no colour at all in the right proposal. And if you look at the uh, the gloss facade, you'll see it's changed radically. Um, again, there's no colour in this drawing. Um, there are no approved drawings. There is no existing approval. So this is how Steve Long committed his fraud. And also this extended the footprint um, to the east side, um, which may not again seem that important, but when uh, Camps Bay real estate is tens of thousands of rands a square metre, um, it, it actually is, is quite important because he was committing a fraud um, to the financial gain of himself. Now let's go to the south elevation basement. Again, I put the 2009 approval at the top and the proposal at the bottom. The approved 2009 drawing at the top doesn't refer to any um, retaining wall in the basement that would affect the south of 54 Mr Stern. But now let's look at the proposal that has been sent. And remember, this has already been built. You need a microscope to see. And in tiny, tiny writing, back boundary retaining wall to engineer specification. This wall had been built in October 2010 without anybody knowing. Um, one has to question the building inspector, um, at which I intend to. Um, and more importantly, Mr. Bradbury. There's no lateral support here. Somebody could have been killed not just the workers, but somebody in that garage above without any support. It's just by the grace of God that nobody was using that building at the time. 
Um, but unfortunately, that's probably the reason why Mr. Bradbury was allowed to get away with it. Now let's go to the lower floor basement drawing. Uh, this one is a revision three. Um, note that we're seeing revision numbers on these drawings. We've never seen them before, ever, and we haven't seen them since either, and they're not on the last approved drawing. But anyway, I digress. And further note, these drawings state lower floor as built. Now, I'm not actually sure, now I can understand drawings, what that actually meant at the time. Um, anyway, I'll have to ask this question at the appropriate forum. So this drawing was dated the 15th of February 2011. So this was um, basically a year before the proposals were being presented in this February 2012 meeting. So let's remind ourselves of the previously approved drawing, which was the uh, November 2009 drawing. And this is basement drawing 101. So I split the picture in two and at the top I've put the approved 2009 drawing and at the bottom the one being proposed to us on the 20th of January 2012. Um, you'll see there's absolutely no colour in the basement on the bottom drawing and there is no suggestion at all of any 2.8 retaining wall to be built um, and in fact it states that the existing Vibocrete wall would remain. So as a lay man and as nothing was mentioned that there would be any retaining walls um, I assumed as did uh, my abutting neighbour um, that everything was going to remain the same as the above um, 2009 approval. However one thing nobody noticed was if you look at the drawing to the left which is the approved 2009 and then look to the drawing to the right which is the 20th of January 2012 proposal there's suddenly a reinforced concrete wall that's non-coloured um, um, that nobody noticed. Uh, this was a, a, a regular trick of um, the architect Steve Long, who would put non-coloured structures in, suggesting they'd either been approved um, or um, were already existing, and in this case, neither. So the top boundary, not the one to the left, the line to the left, but the line at the top going from E to right, um, there's nothing there. It doesn't say anything about um, a, a Vibocrete wall. But if we go to the proposal, it now says existing Vibocrete wall to remain, level of garden to match adjoining property. Um, originally there was an outbuilding here. There was no existing Vibocrete wall. At the time this architect um, drawing was drawn, there was actually a wooden um, structure um, with hardboard that had replaced the damaged wall of the outbuilding um, and certainly not a Vibocrete wall. And I've circled the wooden hardboard in red. And it's clear the base of the hardboard and the base of the Vibocrete wall running down towards the Beta Road side of my property um, is actually in the ground. So again this is how Steve Long confused me and misled me because that's every time I saw Vibocrete wall to remain um, I just thought the Vibocrete wall would be exactly where it is and, and I had no idea there would be any excavation. And if you look along the whole common boundary of my property and that of Mr Bradbury's it says existing Vibocrete wall to remain very clearly there's no evidence that there will be any excavation at any point of this wall. This is the basement um, west elevation drawing, which is the boundary wall affecting my property, going from Earth 54 down towards Beta Road. Um, and in this instance, we're just going to stop at the garage. And it says, existing garage to be reinstated between the new boundary wall and basement wall. No mention of retaining and no mention that the basement would be below my ground level. And this is the basement plan, and you'll see that it says existing Vibocrete wall to remain uh, along the whole of the top of the picture. And let's go into the little garage area there. And here you'll see that there's a brick wall uh, that's going to be constructed 500 millimeters away from the site boundary and it says the existing garage to be reinstated between new boundary wall and basement wall. 
um, the new boundary wall is actually the garage wall. Okay, there is going to be no boundary because if you remember, the Vibocrete is going to stay exactly as it is. But the interesting thing here is that it says existing garage. This garage was demolished in September 2010. It was one of the first things to be demolished. Now, drawings are a legal document. They're dated um, and they represent a legal document. So somebody coming to these drawings later who knows nothing about this, um, the development uh, negotiations or anything else, um, will assume that at this point the garage stood and it was going to be demolished um, as the little dotted lines suggest. This is fraud um, uh, and this is not allowed um, on, on uh, a legal government document of any kind. There should have been nothing there. The existing garage had nothing to do with these um, new proposals. And further note that the green um, reinforced concrete wall at the bottom there had already been built. These were as built structures. Um, retaining the existing garage that didn't exist in any event um, was an engineering impossibility to build. Um, what Mr. Bradbury and his architect have done is very wrong. And he's done exactly the same with the uh, the ground floor existing garage to be reinstated as shown with garden above. Um, and there's a, a, a brick um, boundary wall which is uh, allegedly going to be built 500 millimetres from the existing um, fibrecrete wall. Um, but instead, um, as honour isn't um, a word that exists in uh, Mr Bradbury's vocabulary or Steve Long, um, they built a retaining wall um, within that 500 uh, millimetre uh, setback that was supposed to be there for uh, the um, fibrecrete wall to remain safe. Uh, there certainly wasn't supposed to be any excavation. Uh, this has um, compromised the structural integrity of the boundary. Uh, there is not a drawing for this retaining wall. I've never seen a drawing for this retaining wall. Um, and the last time I went to the city in 2017, uh, they still had no um, drawing for this reinforced concrete um, retaining wall. And you'll see that in any event, Mr. Bradbury never had any intention of building a brick wall. Um, and you can see the builder here, he's putting in reinforcing bars because the garage was actually poured as one unit. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to go into that detail now. There are many other fraudulent um, drawings in this January 2012 proposal uh, with a drawing sent to um, Mr. Stern of Earth 54. Uh, lastly, I'm just going to do another one of them, which is the swimming pool. Now, this is a section BB, and you'll note it says pool deck. Um, there's no colour in the drawing, and there was no reference to a pool in um, Steve Long's letter to Tony Stern, and it wasn't discussed at the at the meeting either. There was to be no pool. Um, I don't understand why it says pool deck, but anyway. Um, so let's go to the other drawings. There's nothing that suggests a pool in the basement area. On the ground floor, it just says garden. There's no swimming pool. And absolutely nothing on the north elevation either. So let's go back to the engineer drawings that um, my engineer and I saw at City Interface with Gavin Matthews on the 14th of August. 2017, years after this 2012 um, proposal, you'll see that revision 4 is dated the 2nd of the 2nd, 2012. Now remember that Steve Long has sent these drawings to Tony Stern on the 8th of February 2012. So six days after um, the revision 4 had been drawn by the engineer. And this is the section um, drawing 203, um, which is dated revision 4. Yet the drawing date is the 12th of the 10th, 2011. And Steve Long is sending this to um, us for comment as a proposal um, without any swing pool drawings. 
But if you look at this section that he sent um, via email to Mr. Stern and myself, you'll see that um, on this revision four drawing, there says pool deck, okay? Now, this must be the revision four swimming pool, okay? You can't have a pool deck and a garden, or maybe you can, I don't know. But um, it, it just says to me that this is this is uh, uh, this is where he was. Uh, his fraud is pretty clear here because you can't have a pool deck without a pool, um, and none of the other drawings he presented to us had a swing pool. But the engineer drawing had clearly drawn one in February two thousand and twelve. In fact, the second of February, um, which was a revision four. Now here's another fraud. This drawing was in the Rule 53 record. Uh, the Rule 53 record is a disclosure record that the city give you um, once you launch an application to the High Court. You'll notice this drawing is exactly the same as the drawing that we were presented um, and sent to Tony Stern on the um, 8th of February 2012 and was dated the 12th of October 2011. But in the Rule 53 record, this very same Section BB Drawing 203 is now dated the 25th of the 1st, 2012. And this drawing was submitted um, along with all the other drawings that we've just discussed in this film. The date of the application is illegible, which is probably the intention, uh, but the date on the PBDM receipt stamp um, says the 24th of February 2012. Uh, the application is signed by Stuart Bradbury and the description of building work says write a plan with additions to building under construction. We were not aware that uh, anything had been submitted. And he states that area of new work is 43 square metres. There's nothing in the area of carport, which is bizarre because there is a garage on the plan. Uh, the swing pool is 23 square metres. Um, wall height is left empty and wall length is left empty. Uh, there's no signature, but the estimated cost of internal alterations um, is 250,000 rands. And let's go to the bottom uh, note. Um, let's, let's look at number four. SANS 1040-A forms 1 and 2 fully completed and signed must accompany the application and deemed to be part of this form part of this form. It doesn't make sense. Deemed to form part of this form, part of this form. Well, that's twice. Anyway, there are no SANS forms 1 to 2, filled in by the engineer or Mr Bradbury or the architect Steve Long. Um, there are no engineer um, drawings submitted, but strangely, the city have kept the architectural drawings. Um, clearly, they are part of this fraud. Um, I've mentioned this many times, but I get no answers from the mayor or anybody else who's interested in corruption at the city of Cape Town. Chris, I just want to ask a question. The pool, is there not anything to do with the height? At the moment, it's... Is it okay? And the garage? If, if there was no objection to the pool from anybody, the council would not be able to approve it as this building stands. Okay. I mean, essentially, this building is in limbo. And I don't um, know what... I, don't, I can't so read drawings. To, we I, want I can't, to, which is we why want I wanted 3D to to drawings before. By visual means and by plans, mm. we get to a stage where we can say this, that, or the other thing, and there can be an agreement or no agreement. That's what we're going yeah, to Yeah, obviously, that's, yeah, that's, that's where we're going to wants to get to as well. Yeah. I, I was just thinking that we were, today was going to be more closer to that point. 